Paul George is a Philadelphia 76er. You know, he finally got to L.A. He made all this talk about he's home. He want to bring a ring to the Clippers. You know, he don't he don't want to go anywhere. He wants to retire a Clipper. Okay. But he's with Embiid now. He's with Maxi now on a max deal now. Mm -hmm. Getting 40, 50 plus million dollars a year when he's 38. That's right off the crazy. Crazy. Right off the bat, I'm gonna ask you. Oh, and I guess to piggyback off of this, they also did sign Tyrese Maxey to his max extension. Obviously, Philly had a ridiculous amount of cap space, they had to use it. Um, so they lock up Paul George and Tyrese Maxey to pair with Joel Embiid. Do you feel like this really moved the needle for the 76ers? Because I think. At the end of this year, it felt like there was a clear gap in the top of the Eastern Conference where you had the Celtics, you know, and then probably a gap there. And then you get into a mix between if the Knicks are healthy, maybe Milwaukee if they're healthy. And then it kind of feels like Philly's even a gap below those teams. Do you feel like them adding Paul George, locking up Tyrese Maxey, kind of puts them back into that conversation of being one of the best teams out East? Yes, 100%. Replacing Paul George with Tobias Harris is instantly going to catapult you into a better, to being a better team. Um, I think Paul George fits there perfectly. Um, I think, honestly, it's like, I don't think they necessarily like 100% couldn't have won without adding another quote unquote star because the way Joel Embiid was playing before he got hurt last season, he was playing like the best player in the world. You know what I mean? Like he was playing like one of those guys that can, play at that top tier level to win you a championship. It's just unfortunate he ended up getting hurt. And even in the playoffs, he was he was hurt. Um, and Maxie was a guy who looked like a solidified number two who's only ascending, only getting better with a really good assortment of role players and a quality roster around them. So I already felt like, like me personally, I felt like if they didn't get hurt, like this could have been the year that they definitely got out of the second round. Like Joel got at least that monkey off his back and was able to make some noise. Now, granted, Boston just looked like the juggernaut, so they probably would have won anyways. Um, but I felt like they at least was a team that was good enough to compete if they were fully healthy. So adding a guy like Paul George is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a perfect fit. You know what I mean? It's another guy who can create his own shot. It's another guy who can take pressure off those two guys. Um, it's another guy who, I mean, the defense hasn't been like elite, like how it used to be like earlier in his career, but it's a guy who isn't obviously still can play a little bit of defense there. Like, I just think the fit is perfect. Um, Paul George isn't going to ask to be the number one, of course. Um, there's going to be a nice way he might not even be the number two, especially if Maxi keeps ascending the way he's ascending. I think so, it's going to be most nights, to be honest with you. It's uh, honestly, I'm not opposed to it, especially like I said, especially if Maxi keeps because he got he's Maxi gets better every single year, you know what I mean? And he's a guy who isn't afraid of the moment come playoff time. Like you see nope. them, you saw him win them games in the playoffs. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I just think it's a perfect fit. Um, I think in a Eastern conference where, I mean, we'll probably talk about it where the Knicks obviously got better. Um, the Celtics are as good as the Celtics are like it, it definitely puts you in that conversation um, to where just flat out talent wise, it isn't a huge, huge gap to where it's just like, ah, we really have no chance even when healthy. So I think it definitely puts them in that that 100%, you know, title contention, at least getting out of the East type of tier. I really do hate to be that guy. I do. Oh, man. Oh, um, man. <laughs> but we, we all know, like, we can all call a spade a spade at this point. When Joel Embiid is healthy, like you said, he is – in the conversation for the best player on the planet when he's healthy. Obviously, his health has continually been a big issue throughout his entire career, especially come playoff time. Paul George is up there as probably <laughs> top three to four, at least in the last you know few years of his career at this point, especially when you look at just his Clippers tenure. Fair or not, not somebody that you can count on being there in the playoffs, whether that was a combination now of the injuries or just they are calling him pandemic P, bro. That's true. Like the issue for Philly has never been the, the talent there. 
It's about getting to the finish line. They can never get to the finish line in healthy enough to be able to cross it. Um, so look, on paper, I, I love the fit. I think they're gonna be a great team. It's right. I don't really don't like to be that guy, but it does have to come down to what is going, what is what are y'all gonna look like come mid-April next year? They're all gonna be healthy, ready enough to play through what's going to be a very physical top of the East because if the Celtics stay remotely healthy, if the Knicks stay remotely healthy, if the Bucks stay remotely healthy, you're going to have to see at least two of those teams if you want to get to the finals. Those are going to be dogfight series, physical series. So it, it's tough for me to love it as much as I want to when I know that that is coming. And I'd love to be proven wrong, but – it's so many years in a row where it's hard to go against the history that we have. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about health, 100%. Like like you said, Joel Embiid, the biggest problem for them has been health. Like Joel Embiid not being healthy when it matters. Paul George not being healthy when it matters. I completely agree from that standpoint. I'm just saying strictly basketball-wise, if they're on the court, which, again, could be seen as like the same way you look at the Clippers where it's like, Oh, how, how many times are you going to say if they're healthy, if they're healthy? Because they're just at some point, you know, what I mean, they're just not, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if they are, I think the fact that, like you said, Maxi being there to where Paul George isn't relied upon as much as he was on the Clippers to where. Obviously, at the times that Kawhi isn't there, Paul George is your number one, which he admitted himself. He's not a, a number one. You can see he's not a number one. Um, even times where there's times where he can't step up as a number two, not saying he can't do it all the time, but there's times where he's relied upon to be a, a, a trusted number two and he couldn't come through. Like I said, Maxi, I trust Maxi in the playoffs. Um, I trust Maxi as far as his ascension, him being that guy who could step up and be a number two. So just as far as him plugging in there and giving you that star level, like type performances occasionally, but not relied upon to be the guy, I think that if they're healthy, it's definitely a really good fit for him. Like, like I said, I completely agree though. If it's in terms of like, this is strictly on paper to me. Like, as far as like, would I pick them to come out of the East? No, because one, I still don't think that they're better than the Celtics. I still think I like the the Knicks a lot as well. Um, yeah, I, 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 that Knicks fit is just we can we're gonna talk about it. I, I have definitely. two. We're gonna talk about it, but I think I like the Knicks uh, uh better than them as well. But mm -hmm. as far as like on paper being in that tier, I think that puts them up there. Also, because like I said, jo the way Joel and B was playing, he was literally playing like he was the best player in the planet. Yeah. So if you pair Maxi with that, if you pair Paul George with that, I think on at least on paper, it's definitely a team that should be at least in that tier. Um, but we talk about it all the time. The games aren't played on paper. <laughs> so when it comes yeah. down to it, if we're talking about health wise, yeah, I'm definitely not betting on this team whatsoever. But just as far as the fit, if all guys are there, I think that this is a really good team who can be in that tier. It just comes down to them being healthy and then putting it all together. Because, I mean, you talk about injuries all you want with Joel Embiid. He also is a guy who hasn't really sh shown up in the playoffs as well to play to that MVP level standard that he has in the regular season. So I think to me, this is a team that is going to come down to it, – it's just going to come down to the playoffs. like. I mean, obviously, it's going to kind of matter a little bit what they do in the regular season, but in reality, it's not in the same way. It's like you guys can have a fantastic regular season. I need to see you guys put it together in the playoffs before I mm -hmm. ever really give you guys that full credit. But strictly on paper, if healthy, I do think it at least puts them in that tier to where it's not like a huge gap. Um, but I still have the Celtics and I have the Knicks ahead of them for sure. I, I think I would agree with putting those two teams in front of the 76ers as well. Um, and let me be very clear. Like, I know it probably sounded like I was hating to start off how I felt about the Paul <laughs> George fit. I, like you said, it is 1,000% an upgrade. They just replaced Tobias Harris, who gave them literally zero points in a winner go home game with Paul George. Like, it is a massive, massive upgrade. Like we've been saying, the fit on paper makes so much sense. Um, and he, you're going to have – more rim protection at the rim with Joel there. Paul Jordan, I don't think, is going to be relied upon to be as big of a defender um, as he has been in the past because I just think if all the time catches up to you, he's not the defender that he used to be. 
And we've both been talking about it. Now he gets the luxury of being the third option. And Paul George has a third option. It's hard to find better talented third options out there um, right. than a guy like PG. So 1,000% on paper and health permitting. I think they can take anybody um, to the limit and have the you know what it takes to be able to get to the finals and potentially be a championship caliber team. Um, it's just going to take getting there and being healthy. Um, when the time matters for that to to happen.